Have you heard the news? Oh, good girl. Did you come to share the good news? Are you so excited? This is Luna, I'm Sir Wade, and by now you may know that Blender has announced Cycles X. So I wanted to make a video to explain what the heck that means, what it is, and all the stuff that that comes with. I watched the entire 40 minute presentation with Yes, the whole thing. I watched it. I took notes. I also read all the documentation we have so far, download it, play with it. So in this video, I want to do two things. Number one, I want to share with you everything I've learned, everything we know so far about Cycles X, what to expect. Because even using a prototype build on day one of this thing coming out, I'm able to move this quickly using Cycles on the production files of Spring, which is a really heavy scene if you've ever messed with it yourself. That's crazy. And you'll see that there isn't hair. <laughs> And there's some weirdness with volumes, and I want to talk more about that as we get into this. And the second thing I want to do in this video is to get you excited about what's coming next. If you look at the benchmarks that they have released about Cycle so far that we're going to take a look at, they've only done tests using the NVIDIA RTX 6000 and A6000, studio level cards that most regular people just don't have. So I thought it would be useful to do some testing of my own. So I'm going to be testing the RTX 2080 Ti. I have a 1080 downstairs. We're going to do that as well. The 3070. 3080, and of course the 3090. We're gonna be doing a full comparison of the GPU rendering, but because this is also supposed to really help CPU rendering, and since a lot of people just can't get cards right now, I'm aware of that, we're also gonna be talking about CPUs. I don't have boxes for everything, but we're gonna be doing some thread ripping, and I was able to get my hands on this, the Ryzen 9 5900X. Hi. And these are just the components I have boxes for. So we'll be doing a ton of testing and comparison, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't wanna miss that video. So I wanna give you all those answers, but for today, let's just talk about what the heck is Cycles X and why do we care? Cycles X is the 10 year refresh of the Cycles renderer inside of Blender. After launching for 2011, it had a lot of development in the last 10 years, and they are now trying to retool it for 10 years starting now. There's a lot of new things they wanted to add, things they wanted to change, and so instead of adding a bunch of new code on top of already existing code, they are rewriting a lot of the architecture to make room for new features and just future-proofing the renderer as a whole. The first big question that everybody wants answered is what does this mean for us? What is gonna be different and what can we expect to change from this new architecture that they are writing? Like I mentioned, they're stripping a whole lot of stuff out, redoing it, and that's a really good thing for reasons we're gonna get into. But the first main thing they're looking at doing is improving the interactive viewport performance when you're working in your scene and you want to actually see what the scene's going to look like without needing to render right now, that out of the box viewport usability is a big focus. Not having to tweak a lot of settings to get the performance up and get the noise down and have to kind of do a whole lot of that just setting stuff before actually just hitting the render button. That's one of the big focuses in speeding up everything. That way you don't have to really worry about all that. It just works faster across the board. They're also working on improving the batch rendering, so actually spitting out the final frames as well. But how they're gonna be able to do this comes down to two main things. One of the big things you may have heard is that the RTX cards have a new Turing architecture. Now, without diving into what all of that means, it means that there's a new type of technology being used here that Blender's going to be able to leverage. And to be a little bit more specific, the second thing is the algorithms that are being used in Cycles Renderer for caustics, for volumetrics, for having a whole bunch of lights or really complicated scenarios and setups between all the new hardware changes and the software being kind of rewritten to account for that. There's gonna be a lot more efficient communication between software and hardware. It all sounds great, but it also sounds like it's gonna be a really long time till we have it, right? Not really. They're already two months into the project and they were estimating about a six month timeline for this to work. If you wanna mess with it today, you can download the 3.0 alpha build, but it's gonna be probably in 3.1 where we see the official release. But because it's still a prototype, expect some weirdness. Don't use it for any big projects it might end up messing with. Just like, you know, everything that they do with the alpha and the beta versions, use at your own risk, all that stuff. In the demos we saw during their presentation, we saw speed increases of up to 700%, seven times faster. It is important to note that when you look at the different graphs that they provided, the vertical scales are slightly different and there's not specific information on what the samples were. Not everything was exactly consistent to give these results, but that's okay. That's why I'm gonna be doing separate tests and I'm sure other people will be doing that as well. But regardless, these are amazing speed increases, but should everybody expect that everything just renders that much faster on your computer? Not necessarily. Some of the features they have working right now are faster GPU performance in general, which leads to a higher performing viewport, both for interactivity and for rendering. But there are some important changes currently and permanently being made. One to note is that the final rendering will always be progressive. That means no more tiling. So tile size is gonna be a thing of the past. Now, in case anyone is wondering what that means, it's actually a really good thing. To recap, to render with tiling means to divide the image into a bunch of squares and pick one at a time to focus all the computer's energy and resources on that one square to finish that, compartmentalize, and move on to the next. Generally, this works pretty well. The other way to render is a progressive render, which is to render 
the whole screen is up for grabs all at once. Now say your computer's working on a tile, all the system resources are focused on that job, and every pixel is being sampled and accounted for. But as you get closer and closer to being finished, more of your computer resources have finished their job and we're just kind of waiting on those last couple of pixels done by whatever resource the computer is assigned to that to be finished. They can't really both do one job, we just have to wait for one to do its thing. And so as you get closer to the end of a tile, you end up having a lot of unused potential in your computer resources that could be going to other things, but you can't move on until that tile is complete. So by moving away from tiling and into a progressive rendering mode, it means that the idle processor and GPU threads no longer have to wait for a tile to complete before they can be assigned to new pixels that haven't been rendered yet. All the resources can be utilized all the time. And this is a feature that's available now, you can turn on progressive rendering, but generally it's slower than all tiling methods, and so it's not really useful at this stage. This is something that the devs have noticed, they've mentioned it, they've said so, but due to the new architecture, that is something that has changed. You can already enable progressive. It's actually often slower than tiled rendering, and with this new architecture, it's usually faster. Other features that are changing, OpenCL is being entirely replaced. Like, it's gone, that's not a thing anymore, so goodbye OpenCL, hello to something new. I don't know what that is yet, but we'll find out. And in the current iteration, these are things that will be worked on, and so as we see the build evolve, we'll see these come back. Volumes, shadow catchers, multi-device rendering, those are still a work in progress and they're not currently in there at all. But those are things that are expected to be back by the time it's actually official, so. Now I've been mentioning the new architecture, so let's dive into what that means to have new kernel architecture. Now I'm not gonna pretend to know what it means, all the scheduling and this whole chart they released. I didn't stick with computer science that long, I switched to animation. But here's what I do know. The hardware that's gonna be able to take the biggest advantage of this new rewrite is any RTX card with Turing architecture. So the 20 series, 30 series, presumably whatever happens after that. This is currently an NVIDIA GPU only thing, but if you don't have an RTX GPU, it doesn't mean all is lost. There's a lot of CPU improvements and this new architecture is more hardware agnostic. So AMD and Intel graphics support is on the horizon. It's something Blender is working with them to figure out. The possibility of having the Apple M1 chip even work is in theory, more possible, but we'll have to wait and see. But what this means and why these cards are able to take so much advantage is because anything with more complex shaders or just more shaders in general, it's just able to move through them more efficiently and work with them a little bit better. So whether you are on a desktop version, the laptop versions, you are going to see a performance increase. But that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's gonna see the same change across every scene that you're working on. Simple scenes aren't really gonna see that much of a difference in general because there's not a whole lot to optimize there. You can actually see this from the Blender benchmarks that they released. If you look at the Agent 327 barbershop scene, if you've opened that scene yourself, you know it is heavy and there's a lot of shaders, there's a lot going on. The render time is down significantly, down with about everything else, which is insane. But it's because there's so much complexity going on in that scene that there's so much to optimize. Some of the other scenes don't see nearly as drastic a change and that's kind of the reason why. It's the complexity that's being addressed. So anything like subsurface scattering, where that may have been a deterrent before, like I don't wanna add that, it's gonna just take too long in my final render, now might not be that big of a problem, might not be something that you have to hold back from because it's gonna you know, cost you too much time rendering. You might just be able to say it. It's not gonna be that big of a deal, gimme. And those are some of the situations where everybody does win. We're also expected to see a performance difference across different generations of cards. So the RTX A6000 and the RTX 6000 are two different generations of cards and you can see that they don't behave exactly the same in terms of the changes. It's unclear what those differences are gonna be. That's what we're gonna be testing here with the 20 series and the 30 series, and those numbers are gonna change. So if I make that video this week, for example, it's all still a work in progress as far as the render is concerned. So those numbers are gonna change, those ratios are gonna differ by the time the official release happens. So we're gonna to have to revisit it once Cycles X becomes the official Cycles renderer. Just something to keep in mind. This new kernel architecture also allows for a new type of volume sampling, as well as many light sampling and path guiding. And there's a few future features, few future features. Yeah, I said that right, wow, okay. There are a few future features, got it again, that uh, involve that, which we'll come back to. Before we jump there, I wanna talk about the CPU performance, because if you don't currently have an RTX graphics card or the one that you want, it's important to know that you can still reap some benefits of this new architecture. So they showed a few performance differences in Cycles X on a CPU render. I have no idea what CPU they were using in this test, but you can see that there's a reduced amount of black pixels being sampled or just kind of empty zones not being rendered just yet when tumbling around the viewport. The goal here is to allow you to move in the scene while Cycles is active so that you can actually see what's going on and keep previewing what you're working with. This also works with the denoiser. They've killed the NLM, the, what is it, non-local means? I don't know what that means, but that's the old Blender denoiser. And the open image denoiser is more advanced, it's the faster one. That is the new standard for Blender's denoiser. There's also optics, the NVIDIA denoiser. I don't know how those two are gonna 
win which one's going to be faster. We'll have to wait and see. But the performance is increased regardless using the CPU with and without denoising, and you can do that regardless of the GPU that you're using. There's also viewport adaptive sampling, which is to change the way that certain pixels are sampled on screen based on Blender's rough estimate of what it thinks you should be doing. So that's another thing you can use as well. Now, as for the future features, we don't know when they're coming out. As I said before, right now we have the 3.0 alpha and probably another four or five months or so of development before they're ready to give it the beta treatment and really figure out the last little bugs before making it a 3.1 official release. At least that's what I've gathered so far. So at some point we'll see a feature to pause and resume renders, as well as more options around complex and heavy lighting setups. For example, caustics and volumetrics. Caustics is something that will be running on the GPU, so it'll be way faster, and volumes in general will have increased performance and shorter render times. They also mentioned light groups and light linking, something that I think a lot of people have been asking for, something that Maya does really well, the light linking menu. I don't think Blender has had that yet. I don't no, for sure. Comments will let me know if I'm wrong. But the main culprit of why that hasn't been a thing so far is because of how much memory usage it takes up. And with that new architecture, rendering usage is something that's become more efficient and will be easier to implement these kinds of features with. You'll also be able to use any old dot blend scenes that you have created with Cycles X. The only main difference is that there's gonna be less settings to tweak. You won't have tile size and things like that to worry about, but until it's the official release, you might still have weirdness, like I said, with the, the spring files, hair isn't rendering for me, and there was some really weird stuff with volumes. Volumes have been giving me some trouble in general with Blender. It's the thing that I do that causes the most crashes. I don't know, I think I just push it really hard because I'm excited to get with volumetric stuff. It's one of the big reasons I started using Cycles and learning Blender in the first place. And you'll see here when I was messing with the spring production files, when I was using Cycles X, I'd come across a frame that had a volume in it, and it was this really weird voxelized blotchy thing. I just had to turn it off and I was fine. But there was also weirdness in the normal official release that I'm using, where it just wouldn't let me do anything and see a result unless I paused the renderer. It was really bizarre and it was really blurry, and then I hid that, it was fine. Not really sure what's going on with that. Maybe I did something wrong, I don't know. But I don't expect that to be a problem going forward, as the new version of the render is going to be doing a bunch of stuff with volumes. I imagine that'll get better and more stable. They've been doing a lot of stuff with volumes in general, VDBs and such. So it's clear they do have a focus on improving volume stuff either way. And that is what I know so far. If you have any other information, anything I missed or any questions that weren't fully answered, hit the comments, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, all the socials are linked down below as well as my Patreon. If you wanna support what I'm doing or join the animation dailies, we have dailies twice a week. We do animation feedback and it's a fun community perk. So check that out. And if you have anything specific you want me testing, any certain blend scenes or I don't know, stuff other than normal benchmarks, let me know on Twitter. Send me requests, send me stuff, send me files. I'm happy to check some stuff out when we do the full comprehensive testing benchmarking stuff of these cards and chips. So make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that. Ring that notification bell so you actually get notified of the new uploads. Hit this button if you enjoyed the video. If it helped at all, I'd really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Here's going to be other videos to watch and uh, I'll see you in the next video.